It was indeed a classic. United reaching the FA Cup semi-finals with a helping hand from Anthony's first goal at Old Trafford in over a year and Ahmed Diallo's 120th minute winner being his first ever goal for United. United boss Eric Ten Hag took to, uh, spoke to Talk Sport after the game and dedicated the late win to the fans. We are in a, in a, in a tr- uh, process um, and in a trajectory together and we will achieve our goals because you see this side is have a high potential and when we get everyone on board you will see where we have even more potential and we can achieve a lot and we want to go back to a club uh, fight for silverware uh, not only fight but we want to win we have a long way to go but you see the potential uh, so tomo um in all of the things you hate most, <laughs> where does losing to Manchester United rank? Oh, it's massive. It's it, but it's second. It's second to losing to Everton. Oh, right. Yeah, because like Everton for me being a local lad, and I, and I know. Listen, I get it. Worldwide, Liverpool, Manchester United, that is is massive. But the derby match because of local boy. That losing to the Blues has always been one of the biggest things. I, I go back to I was scarred when I was a kid, the Derby games and losing, having to go into school. But listen, this is massive. Liverpool, Manchester United. I said and at times you scoffed, Jeff. It's the biggest game in world football, and I know you go Barcelona, Real Madrid. It's, it's Manchester you know, this City. Is, do me a favour. It's they're a very good team and I, and I lovely the way they play, but they're nothing in comparison to the size of Manchester United, and that's why the support globally for Liverpool and Manchester United outstrips. Isn't Liverpool any and Manchester United the biggest game in world football only in the minds of Liverpool and Manchester United fans? No, you're talking absolutely tosh again. We're going back to Soccer Saturday again now. No, it's not, and it's you look at it, and it's how big your football club is worldwide, fan base, things like that, Jeff. And I know Manchester United struggles. We had our struggles, so th- those things. I know where the Manchester United fans are hurting, but this is a huge game, and you just listen to the commentary there from the guys. You felt it how big this game actually was, how big it meant to both sets of fans. Yeah, I mean, and so big that Jurgen Klopp wants to use limitless <laughs> substitutes. I mean, I didn't get the stuff about a six sub. Manchester United uh, uh, were scraping the bottom of the barrel, with all due respect, with their substitutes, you know. Yeah, so, we've, we've been there, Jeff. I don't know whether you noticed in the last few weeks. Yeah, but why, why would he want a six? How could you justify it's, asking it's, for it, a six substitute? It's in extra time in, in competitions you're allowed one in extra time and other substitutes. Don't know mm. whether you realise that. Yeah, but not in this competition. No, no, exactly, Jeff. That's why Jürgen was moaning about it. Yeah, not because he's got a stronger bench than Manchester United's bench. Anyway, that's for uh, another time. Let's look back on United's dramatic victory with the Guardian's Manchester football correspondent, Jamie Jackson. Morning, Jamie. Good morning. Um, look, 2-1 down at home and, and 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 getting battered in the second half, Manchester United. And I'm going to be honest with you, Jamie. I thought second half, before the Anthony equaliser, United looked pretty clueless. And then, from somewhere, they found this astonishing resolve and zest um, and were absolutely brilliant from then on. But at 2-1 down, was Eric Ten Hag's job on the line? Possibly. I mean, you're right. Clueless is not a bad adjective to describe what they were like in the second half. And I've seen it, as I'm sure we all have, so many times. They can have bright moments in games, Manchester United, but they just kind of can't put it together from 0 to 90 minutes. Um, you know, there's a lack of consistency there. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, Anthony actually scored a goal and it was with his right foot. And I'm not being sarcastic necessarily. What I'm sort of saying is, you know, he's an £80 million winger who never scores and never really contributes. And he actually does. And look what it does, you know, f- for the team and, and, and to this tie. I mean, you know, Ten Hag's talking about potential, but how, how soon is now with regard to potential? You've got to do it, yes, consistently. Um, and we're looking at a Jurgen Klopp team that has done it consistently for years. Um, you could be knocked out. It's a sickener for Liverpool. I get that. Of course it is. No one wants to lose to your arch rivals. I think Phil is right. I think it is the biggest game, certainly in our, our football, always has been, probably always will be, and I don't support either side. Um, and then, yes, you know, they, they get the equaliser and they go behind again, and then, you know, Rashford finally scores, and you can sort of see the life be breathed back in, into the team. 
into Manchester United. But the problem is, or the issue is, is it never seems to be there, as I say, from sort of naught to 90 minutes. He's got to solve that Ten Hag. Um, they're a cup team, aren't they? You understand what I mean? You look mm-hmm. at the league position, they're five points off Spurs, you know, eight off fourth, I think it is, uh, to Villa. They won the Carabao Cup last uh, season. They, they lost the FA Cup final to City. They're in another uh, Cup semi-final. But in terms of the league, where it really matters, they still can't do it. But... Just to take this game, it was a heck of a game, heck of an occasion. What a finish, what a story. You know, the, the, the young lad Diallo, I think he's 21, scores basically the last kick um, and then gets sent off. I mean, I don't know what you gentlemen think, but I think we should remove this rule for sort of a booking for taking your top off. You know, let, maybe give a free kick or something, but who cares kind of thing? It's emotion. It's ridiculous, um, Jamie. It's Jamie, you haven't been listening rule. to us. At, I think one of the early things, Jeff and myself, I, I just don't get it. Say so maybe a little bit older, but VAR these these things, but taking shirts off, you just oh come on, it's nothing. The young lad, it was, it was. It doesn't matter whether it's him or even an experienced player. There's no harm in it celebrating a goal. I just. Uh, Eric Ten Hag's taken his fair amount of stick from a lot of quarters, though, Jamie, over the years. How much credit does he take for the fact that, you know, he threw caution to the wind, maybe through necessity, but he brought on Anthony, he scored, he brought on Diallo, he scored, he ended up playing with only Maguire and uh, Dallow as defenders. How much, you know, credit has he got in the bank for those decisions? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a gamble. And if, if it didn't work, then I suppose we might be debating, you know, was he sort of you know, foolish generally with his game plan. But no, I think he's got a bit of credit in the back. I think that's the way you've got to go. If you're going to go down, go down fighting and gambling and, and you know, just t- just taking a, a chance. Um, and I think if you broaden it out with regard to his job, I think, you know, Sir Dave Brailsford and Sir Jim Ratcliffe are obviously, you know, looking at the club. He, as I understand it, Eric, Eric Ten Hag is involved in a lot of discussions. They're taking him seriously. And as long as that top four or maybe top five now of Champions League is available qualification wise, I think, you know, they, they, they won't remove him. And this, this semi final now, I think it's April the 20th or 21st, you're basically looking the last three or four weeks of the season after that. I'd be surprised now if he doesn't stay in place until the end of the season because the season's still alive until, you know, certainly that FA Cup semi final. So I think he does get a lot of credit. I think he can now say to his players, Ten Hag, look, you've done that against Liverpool. You know, you've been brave. You've got that in the bank. Let's let's use that. And so, looking upward from his, you know, for his job to Jim Ratcliffe, you know, he's got that as collateral. He's got that as credit, as you as you say, Jeff. So it's done him a lot of good. But we're still sort of talking about moments in games with Manchester United. What I want to see, I think we all do, unless you're a Liverpool uh, person, obviously, is you know, and be consistent and sort of turn it on all the time. Can can he do it? Can this team do it? I'm not so sure. But let's wait and see. You never know in football, do you? No, you don't. Jamie, thanks very much indeed for that, mate. Um, <laughs> it's got another text in here. Jeff at his usual clock bashing agenda again. Just a moment. I'm it's just going to go. Put up with. No, no, look. We've been called Clop FM. I am just going to go and bang my head against the wall here. That's better. Talk Sport Breakfast. Waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.